Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh and this is Working Man Reads. Thank you so much for all the continued support and yeah, all the new subscribers that we've been getting over the past couple months. Thank you so much. That is super cool and I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and you're ready for this nice weather weekend that we are about to have here in New York. But Right off the bat, I'm going to give some shout outs, and then I will link these channels down below. Um, these are guys and girls that uh, check out my channel a lot, and, and honestly, I'm just pulling up one of my videos where I uh, am going through the comments, and I'm kind of just, just kind of seeing who I always see their names, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, there's tons, but uh, words on paper. I'm not sure if he has actually dropped a video yet. If you have, buddy, I'm sorry. Um, I will click on your channel after I make this video and make sure, but he is about to uh, start a channel, so if you guys want to go check his channel out and give him a sub, uh, that would be really cool because he, he cracked me up. In my last video, he said, my favorite part is when you mention the Bible, a horror fiction novel, a work of fiction by a psychologist, and uh, then you say, I'm just Josh. <laughs> he says that's great. So uh, yeah, that was a creative comment, and it's true. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, and then is going to be Michael K. Vaughn, and uh, he starts off his videos uh, like in Vaughn Manor, like he's living in Vaughn Manor, and I love it. He's got wonderful bookshelves, and he's been doing some tours lately. I still have to catch up. I think I caught like part one and part two, um, but he's a great gentleman, and definitely go check out his channel. Uh, let's see if I can get a gal in here. Um, I don't know if I have shouted out B Reading yet, but B Reading, if you're not subscribed to B Reading, she's funny. She's got great outtakes in the beginning of her videos. Definitely go check out B Reading. Uh, I also love um, the Fonts channel. Um, I will link all these people down below. Uh, the Font is cool because she is kind of starting some, uh, she's actually inspired me to do some of the similar videos. Um, where she is basically discussing important topics and how they pertain to BookTube. She did one with Kit where they were talking about like mental health in BookTube and stuff, and I think it's a very relevant co uh, conversation. Sorry, guys, I'm a little tired today, so I am drinking some coffee. Um, but, uh, yeah, so she's doing relevant arguments and uh, basically just having that healthy conversation and that dialogue. So... Uh, what is this video going to be about? Well, it's going to be a hodgepodge. I haven't been putting out as many videos. And the reason why, here's a little bit of a channel update, is, uh, yeah, we're just getting ready for this baby. Um, I know anybody who's a parent out there kind of understands. So I might do two to three days in between my videos and then give you kind of a 10-minute, 11-minute, 12-minute, you know, around there video. I don't know why I went through every type of minute after 10, but I did, um, you know, 10 to 15 minute video, and I'm going to probably lump some things together, and then I'll do some timestamps down below. I just don't have the time, unfortunately, lately to make a video every other day like I used to or every day. Um, so we're just going to probably do two to three, two, two videos a week. I'm also writing more. Um, and just kind of focusing on myself, getting the rooms ready for the baby, and uh, yeah, we're excited. Uh, four weeks out, um, yeah, yeah, everything's great, going great. My wife is healthy, and the baby's healthy, and yeah, so God willing, everything goes well, and uh, yeah, so been fun. And the weather's getting better. I'm going to try to read more and hang out outside. Um, to the reading, I have to play catch up. I am trying to currently catch up with all of my review books so that I can kind of free read for the summer. So at this point, if you're an author and you watch my videos, I'm closed for reviews. I have like four or five that I have to get done here. And I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna take the summer off of reviewing for Indie and Small Press. And it's not because I don't want to, it's just I kind of need a break and I want to read some like thrillers and different stuff during the summertime. Um, I also want to read pulp fiction. I have a, a big box of pulp sci-fi and uh, fantasy books that are coming in and I'm really excited. They're like really small little uh, like chat books from back in the day and I'm excited to, to bust into those and read some Conan and, and different things like that. So I just want to kind of branch out and just have fun with reading again. I'm still a horror channel. I'm a horror tuber. I will read horror throughout the summer. Um, but I, I kind of just want to pick up maybe a Stephen King book or a Dean Koontz or, you know, I want a Richard Lehman. I want to read some more Lehman. So, yeah. So that's that. Um, but yes, also 
geez, this is a lot. Um, also, I want to do a Q&A because I am approaching one year on BookTube. I know, shocking. And we've exceeded all expectations for myself. I think I said if I made it to 300 subscribers in a year, I would be ecstatic. Well, I'm at like 420 or 418, depending on the moment, because somebody will subscribe and unsubscribe and subscribe and unsubscribe. So if you're not already subscribed, I appreciate you um, anyways, just for watching. But super cool. Um, Instagram did great. So yes, I've talked about it before. I'm just, I'm ecstatic that uh, you guys like uh, me as a person, because this is all it is. It's for fun. I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to get free books. Uh, that's why it's kind of overwhelming when you got, you have all these books to review. You're a little bit overwhelmed, and uh, and I, because I try to put a lot of thought process into to when I'm reading it and seeing how the prose is and all that. So, but all right. So let's get into yeah. So Q and A. I'm gonna do a Q and A. So leave some questions down below, please. Um, it'll be in the title, so hopefully you guys found this moment. Um, definitely leave some questions that you have for me. I've done different things in the past. I've done like uh, assumptions about me. This one's just gonna be a classic Q and A. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to be doing another giveaway on Instagram soon. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, it's working man reads. Um, yeah, definitely do that because I'm going to be doing an Instagram, um, giveaway for hitting a thousand on there. So, okay. So the village of the mermaids, let's pull up the, uh, my write up and everything. Now, if you guys don't know, because I haven't really, uh, reviewed a lot of Bizarro on this channel, but I read a lot of Bizarro, and I want to read more Bizarro going into the future. And if you don't know who Carlton Melanick III is, he is like the grand pooba of Bizarro fiction. The man has a very interesting mind for writing fiction. I don't know any way else to put that. It's There's some hyper-sexualized stuff. There's just outlandish plots and storylines that are just like, what the heck are you reading? You know what I mean? And some of his books, I have given four to five stars. This one didn't land for me, and that is The Village of the Mermaids. I gave it two stars. I'm going to read my review really quickly on uh, Goodreads. So, this review is an interesting one for me. It took me a very long time to finish this one. I read a lot of, I read a lot of C CM3, I abbreviated it, apparently I was feeling cool that day, uh, and for some reason this one didn't hit for me. The plot and the all, uh, and a lot of the premise, the plot had a lot of promise. You have an island completely surrounded by men eating mermaid, man-eating mermaids. The main character is a terminally ill doctor who knows the people of this town located on this island. The islanders have devised a way to feed the mermaids. They use brain-dead human livestock. And uh, that premise sounded very good for a melanic novel. I ended up settling that this one... I, I God, I can't read. I set this one down like three or four times. And that's the case. Um, <laughs> that premise sounds outstandingly interesting. You do find out that the doctor has this... It's, it's, it's not a spoiler, but you... That terminally ill disease he has is part of Melanick's world that he's writing in this, where basically people start to become these food people. And these food people, they have like really soft skin and like they're just brain dead and they're just walking around and they're like all chained up. And the mermaids, and when they're hungry, they just come grab these people and eat them, you know? So it's really interesting. But for some reason, you don't really care about these characters. They're just... The main character is kind of a D. He's just not a good good dude, so you don't really care if he lives or dies. You're kind of like, I kind of hope he does die, because uh, you're reading horror, and you're like, hey, that should happen. But um, you care about uh, the secondary character, who is a female. That would probably be my favorite character of the book. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a bleak, weird one. There are some uh, triggers for people, some sexual stuff. Not as much as other Melanic books. Now... Uh, don't take my review um, as gospel because um, they literally, this is one of his highest rated books on Goodreads. It's a 4.07. For a Melanick book, usually they get, a, he gets a lot of like poor ratings and that's 276 ratings, 45 reviews. So um, usually he gets one to two stars because of the sexual content and the weirdness People, for some reason, will pick up his book and then they'll be like, what the hell am I reading? And then they'll put it down. So um, he gets crappy. 
he gets crappy ones for that. So um, I'm going to read the synopsis for the book right now, but uh, it says, Mermaid, noun, a rare species of fish evolved to resemble the appearance of a woman in order to atta- attract male human prey. Mermaids are protected by the government under an Endangered Species Act, which means you aren't able to kill them, even in self-defense. This especially pro- is, is especially problematic, I can't read today, if you happen to live in an isolated fishing village of Siren Cope, where there exists a healthy population of mermaids in the surrounding waters. That view you as main source of protein in their diet. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty, I liked how he did that. He made it like a a dictionary definition. Um, The only thing standing between you and a ravenous sea woman is the equally dangerous supply of human livestock known as food people. Normally, these feeder humans are enough to keep the mermaid population happy and well-fed. But in Siren Cove, the mermaids are avoiding the human livestock and have returned to hunting the frightened local fishermen. It is up to Dr. Black, an eccentric representative of the Food People Corporation, to investigate the matter and hopefully find a way to correct the mermaids' new eating patterns before the remaining villagers end up as fish people. Um, so yeah, fish food is actually what it says at the end, but, uh, it says there's a little blurb at the bottom. It's pretty cool. Like a Lovecraftian version of a David Lynch Twin Peaks, Village of the Mermaids is a dystopian mystery for the bizarro fiction fan. It proves once again, how cult author Carlton Melanick III brings the weird to a whole new level. And I would agree. He does bring weird. Like who thinks of this story is the, that's the, that's the, that's where he shines. It's like, what the hell were you on when you thought of this idea? I think it's great, but for some reason I didn't get sucked in. Have you guys ever had a story that just doesn't suck you in? If so, let me know down below. Thank you so much for stopping by all you working with men and women. I appreciate you guys. And I will see you soon. Have a good weekend. Can you do your Bigfoot call?